Hello, Reese here from Waypoint with a quick little 101 on the standard assembly process in Deer, as well as how to do assemblies that have third party components. So, first thing we want to do is we want to venture to the production area of Deer, where we can view all assemblies or create an assembly by pressing this function. Now, when you create an assembly, you'll first have to select a location of which the assembly is taking place. This will uh, mean that the system can look at the available components in what's referred to as the bill of materials of the product and check how many it can actually produce in that location. So I'm now going to select um, this demo location here and pull in a product which is a six pack of beer. Let's have a look here. Now you can search with either the product name or the SKU to get exactly what you're after. Once you've actually got a product selected, You'll be now able to use the maximum quantity calculation by pressing this refresh here. And that will show you using the bill of materials, the recipe for this particular product, how many you can tangibly make in this location. Let's make 10. If you're using bin locations, you can designate where you want this particular assembly to go once it's actually been assembled. And if you're doing assemblies that take multiple days, you can use a work in progress account. So while the actual assembly is taking place, the value of all the components are held within a work in progress account until the work is actually complete. And then the products in this instance, 10 six packs are created and their value is loaded in. You'll also be able to load in via the bill of materials a URL for any instruction documents if you have um, a largely complicated assembly process. The work in progress date and the completion date are the expected dates for when these transactions are desired to occur. So if we had the work in progress set to the 31st of 7th and we had a specialty um, work in progress account, that would mean that as soon as that date comes across, the value would be um, moved into that uh, work in progress account and the same for completion. Notes are very valuable, enabling you to write um, in, in inline descriptions for exactly what's occurring in this particular, uh, particular production and you'll also be able to see notes within the all assembly list view. Now that we've got our 10 um, pale ale six packs we want to generate here, I can come down to the assembly order area and I can either manually add the components that make up this product, or if I've got a bill of materials um, entered for the product, I can select load bill of materials. It knows that this is made from one, um, to make one six pack, it is made from one packaging component and six bottles. Combine them together, you get a single six pack. In this instance, because I'm making 10 of them, the total quantity used is 10 packaging and 60 bottles. If any of this stock is currently unavailable, these numbers will show up in red, alerting you that the fact you're about to create an assembly order for items you may need to purchase or manufacture in another process. You also have advanced options such as wastage percentage and wastage quantities. When you have certain materials that say waste a set amount of percentage, say through a cutting process or anything like that, you can use these to get those calculations. So what I'm doing here is I want to authorize my assembly order and think of the assembly order the same way you think of a sales order or a purchase order. At this stage, it's the request for this to occur. It's not actually the occurrence of the actual work. When we get to the pick portion, similar to a sales order, we can copy everything from the actual um, assembly order across. We can adjust quantities um, if required. So for instance, if instead 11 packaging was used, we can adjust this here. And then by pressing the allocate function, what I am doing in my, um, is I'm deducting the stock of these components from your inventory. They'll technically be loaded into your work in progress account, and then work will commence on this. Here, I'll now go to allocate. And these items have now been deducted um, from inventory level, their value has been put in the work in progress account. And when I have finished this assembly, I'll be sure to update the completed date with the correct date of completion and I'll hit complete. Now, all those components have made 10 of these particular products with all their costs combined.
So what happens when, for instance, there's a third party involved? Let's say I'm paying someone to handle this uh, packaging component. They're doing the printing of this and they're charging me a fee. And I want to absorb that into the true cost of these 10 six packs I've created. Well, that's when we'll use a function found in the purchase order area under service purchase. If you raise a service purchase, which is not for products, but instead just for service product lines, you can apply an expense purchase and all its costs into either another purchase order or in this instance into an assembly itself. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to make a hypothetical scenario where in that same um, particular purchase order, I'm going to load in a fee that I'm getting charged by a third party. Now this doesn't need to necessarily be a fee. It might even be products or the act of um, combining uh, a, a bunch of your materials that you actually own and they're doing the service for you. But the truth here is you need to be entering this as a um, service line under a service purchase to be able to do the applied um, value. So here I'll select a new service purchase and enter in the supply details. And in the order line, I'll select a service um, product and I've created one already here. And you can create these preemptively so that they're mapped to the correct expense accounts you want to use. For instance, if you have third party manufacturing mapping in your um, accounting platform, uh, or if you have things such as packaging or other kind of expenses. So I'm gonna select this here. And I'm going to say that they're going to be charging me, let's say, $400 for the third-party service of doing the printing of, um, of those boxes. So I hit authorize on the order, which is the request of these. Um, I could therefore use this as a formal um, purchase order to actually send to that particular supplier. But then when the invoice does arrive, I will enter in their invoice matching, however I need. Let's say it's invoice for today's date. And I'll copy this across. Third party services, unit um, quantity of one for the price of 400 um, X tax. And that's going to my expense account purchases in this instance. Now, when I hit authorize on this, a new button appears called expenses. And this is just because this is a service um, line with an expense account. So when I hit expenses, it enables me to apply that 400 um, dollars into other areas. So I'm going to hit this here and I'm going to allocate to an assembly. And I would look this up, I would do a search um, so I could type in the actual um, particular number here. Let's just go with this particular finished good here. It's a, it's a pretty big one. Not exactly the one I was using in the demonstration earlier. And I can choose how much of this value I want to allocate. I can also use auto allocate to just pre-fill that um, value in. You'll also notice is you can allocate across multiple assemblies, meaning that if you're getting one fee from a third party, but it is um, in fact impacting many different assemblies you are running, this enables you to actually select those. And the best thing about the auto allocate function is it looks at the value of the multiple lines and it separates these out based off the weight of the value. So higher value assembly takes more of the actual financial value and the lesser value takes less. Of course, you can manually manipulate this as well. And you can, of course, leave the value outstanding. So you could maybe use 350 of this value to later come back and allocate to more assemblies as you require. When I hit save, what occurs is these have been done as journal lines against those assemblies. If I select these here and open them up. And I go to the manual journals area here. We see that we have the impact from the purchases that's being combined with the actual assembly charges there. And that inflates in this instance, the 4,800 um, units of Pilsner that has been created in this system. Hopefully that explains the two main processes. The third process is, of course, if it's a third party assembly um, or a, a thought third party manufacturing process that doesn't use any of your stock. And of course, that is just a standard purchase order requesting the goods as per normal. Thank you very much.